You know, it's always been this constant topic that appears in many of the operators' forums. Is IPv6 faster than v4, or is it slower? Is it more reliable, less reliable? And I've had a couple of tries at trying to tackle this question using the measurement platform we've used for some years now at APNIC Labs. We have this online advertisement measurement system where you might see you think you're looking at an advertisement, but in behind there is a tiny little script that gathers a couple of URLs from our servers. And we look intently at that behavior. And we're able to actually make some quite interesting observations these days to actually address those two questions. Is it faster or slower than v4? And is it more reliable or not? Now, the first one is hard to answer because depending on the day of the week, the hour, where you are and so on, there are so many variables on the internet. It's almost like your trip to work. Every day is subtly different. So there's not a constant, it's sort of around an average. So what we chose was to take a look at the time of the initial handshake across the internet. How long does it take to actually extend a packet out from the client to the server and back again? So we micro-measure that, and we do it about seven million times a day all over the internet. And even more than that, we do it twice for every user that has v6. So then we have all these paired measurements that go v4, v6, v4, v6, v4, v6. Now, you'd think that a road's a road, a network's a network, same two endpoints, doesn't matter what protocol, you'd take the same path. You'd be wrong. It's really quite strange. And there's one example that I found actually from where I'm working in the Australian Academic and Research Network, where the trip to Singapore goes up via Perth, and back via the west coast of the US in six. But in four, it goes via the west coast of the US all the time. So there's a marked difference between the round trip times. 100 milliseconds, or a tenth of a second. That's a lot. And so I systematically have measured every network on the planet that offers V6. And, and the answer is, on the whole, V4 is subtly faster than V6 most of the time. But there are some networks where V6 is a little bit faster and sometimes really a lot faster. And that's in some ways a surprising answer. There are two reasons for this we suspect. One is that we're not actually using the same road for V4 and V6. They actually go down different paths. But secondly, there comes this other issue with the internet. These days, we've populated the internet with a lot of middleware, boxes that pick up the packet, look at it, and play with it. Now, in V4, there is a lot of that. And when they pick up the packet and do something, that takes time. If they just let it through, it's faster. And so for some of these systems, what we find is there's this sort of bump of delay in V4 that we don't see in V6. Not everywhere, not all the time. That's certainly part of the issue. So is V4 faster than V6 still? A little, for most people. But for some times, the differences are quite astounding, and sometimes V6 is a lot faster. The second issue is reliability. And this is a very hard topic to study, but what it really says is, do you make it to work on your trip to work? How many, on average, folk drop out? Now, interestingly, the V4 network is not perfect. We actually see a dropout rate at around 0.2 of a percent. One in 500 connection attempts fail in V4, which surprised me. That's a much bigger number than I you know, was expecting because we all use V4 all the time. It's just meant to work, right? But across these ads, we see this consistent level, the small, of failure. So we did the same in V6. What's the failure rate in V6? And it's not 0.2%. It's around 1.5 to 1.6 percent, which is a lot. Now, for a commercial service, that's a big issue. If you get as you know 1.5 percent, which is what um, one in 20-ish, you know, it's starting to hurt. And the real question is, what's contributing to this? And we started looking at that as well. It's not network related, and that's a good thing. It's not the network provider's fault that's causing this lack of V6 reliability. But what we actually think is it's very close to the consumer's home. 
that the equipment they're using, their so-called CPE, consumer premises equipment, often will let V6 packets out. But when the answer comes back in V6, no go. Not interested, go away. And it's that legacy of old equipment that sits in cupboards, that sits on the wire, that isn't V6 aware that we think is causing this issue. Should users sort of see it? Do they complain? And the answer is, well, generally no. It's seamless and invisible. Why is that? Because most of the time, we're not running V6 only networks. We're running V6 and V4. So even when they try and do the connection attempt in V6 and it fails, there's a V4 connection attempt going straight beside it. So ultimately, the consumer gets to where they want to get to, Facebook, Google, whatever, and they don't even see the fact that V6 has failed. It's a silent failure. But if we start to think about, and we are, an all V6 network, a network that doesn't have the crutch of a second protocol, that can't fall back to V4, that number is too high. If we want to think about an all V6 network, we've got to get that failure rate down from 1.5% down to 0.2% or below. And that means flushing out a lot of this very old equipment and making sure that we're all able to do it.